let me ask you a question. What do you love most? What is it that you wake up every day excited for the challenge? If you were to ask me, everyone would say, you're an entrepreneur. Since I turned nine years old, entrepreneurship has been my passion, and I've launched businesses with varied successes from chess tutoring, to handmade bracelets, to ha homemade e-commerce marmalade. It's, if it's an opportunity to make money, I'm there. But as I've grown older, I've realized that the greatest currency is not necessarily the pound, the dollar, or the euro, but the currency of kindness, to avoid sounding cheesy. If it's changing lives and solving problems, I want that too. So now you're looking at me and you're thinking, what is this girl standing on this stage trying to do lecturing me about do achieving social change? Well, let me share my story with you and then maybe you'll understand a bit more why. Despite various short-lived attempts at businesses when I was younger, I created my first proper business when I was 12, after discovering that over two-thirds of eight-year-olds show signs of tooth decay. So I created this toothbrush, an Internet of Things toothbrush, which allowed young people to improve their brushing. This exposed me to a wealth of incredible opportunities, including being able to pitch to Princess Anne as part of the first female STEM incubator free, which was one of my favorite achievements. Though this project never went to market, I soon realized that if it's important to achieve not only profit in business, but also achieve real social impact. I've realized that when I'm doing what I love, I'm happiest, whether it's making money or helping people. If there's a problem, I want to find a solution. Since then, I've created my own economics magazine, I do a tech startup, but all along those lines, it's all about helping people. My economics magazine has reached over 6,000 people in 176 countries and still growing. Last year, I created a charity which aims to bridge the socioeconomic gap for young children, especially girls, who want to go into stereotypically male fields. We create workshops, conferences, networking events, you name it, we're there and we do it. The aim is to provide opportunities they wouldn't otherwise get and previous events have been sponsored by the likes of Microsoft and Visa. Alongside this, we also run a social enterprise where we create children's picture books based on traditional fairy tales with a modern twist, such as Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, but with disabilities, or The Princess and the Frog, but the frog turns into another princess, or Rapunzel with the roles reversed. Our books are sold domestically as well as internationally, and they're sponsored by well-known celebrities, charities, and other figures. We now also work with other businesses who share the same goals as we do. I think that we all agree that the world can be an amazing place, but it would be silly to assume that it's all good. Every day, people fight for their lives, we fight to find purpose in our life, and the world fights to keep us alive. Now you're asking me what this photo has to do with what I'm saying. When I was younger, I was always nicknamed Grumpy. Well, I'm sure you can see why. So here I am, grumpy, that we have just over a decade to reduce the effects of climate change before we're left with irreversible effects. This is me angry that we are half the world's population, but women hold less than 10% of senior level tech roles. This is me annoyed that some people live on less than $2.50 a day, that leaders are more interested in talking about others than in solving problems. There has never been a more important time to act. So what if I told you I had a solution? In a world where there are limited resources and infinite wants, our instinct is to neglect the things that don't benefit us the most. We act irrationally, we don't understand fully the consequences, so many things that affect our decisions. However, we call these, when we call these external costs or benefits, by incorporating social impacts when we are making decisions, we can reduce that gap and reach a more full and appreciative society. Consider this. We consume 100 million tons of plastic every year. That's almost 200,000 tons every day, 
and 200 tons a minute. That's already a lot since I've just started speaking. If we thought more about our decisions, small decisions, we go to a supermarket, we pick up a bag of apples. How much plastic is on that? The next tray along, there are apples, individual ones. We can pick them up, no plastic waste. Small decisions have big impacts. Sure, there are difficulties. Externalities can be hard to judge. Which one is the more important? Are we making the right decisions? However, when we think about it, the decision is simple. A bag of apples or pick them up? So find an issue you care about. For me, it was making sure that nine-year-old girls like Maeve Ryan, who I met while volunteering, had equal opportunities. I, a study by two Harvard psychologists suggested that inspired people tend to make better decisions, have higher levels of creativity, and are generally achieve better in their goals. So it's your lucky day. And even more critical is that we are inspiring the youth. They're a quarter of the world's population. However, they are not engaging fully with society and we need to change this. As my economics teacher would say, I'm teaching you now so that when I'm retired, I can lie back knowing the world is in good hands. So don't be afraid to have an empire state of mind. If you hadn't realized yet, that is the empire state building. If you think about small impacts, your impact is smaller. Think big and you achieve something bigger than yourself. In 2008, the World Bank discovered that when the youth are not involved in their society, GDP declines. So when we choose to sit on our sofa watching friends, convinced that hearing about Ross talk about all his dinosaurs is actually educational, we are reducing economic growth. We should be out there creating our own stories, making our own change. For as long as I've lived, which in the grand scheme of things isn't actually that long, people have told us that teenagers are rebellious and risk-taking and they don't know what they're talking about. But the world couldn't be more wrong. Every day, Generation Z are proving that we care more about the world than any other generation before us. Almost 50% of those aged between 10 and 20 in the UK are active with social change and changing lives. To me, it seems obvious. We need to be supporting these innovators, these young people, and preparing a new generation of people ready to make a change. Some of the most inspirational girls I know, I met last summer when the US Embassy sponsored me to attend a summer program at Boston with days sponsored by Harvard, Babson, and Converse and the likes. There's actually one of my friends in the audience here today. I was amazed by the stories that some of these girls shared. There are girls from Equatorial Guinea living under a dictatorship. Girls from Nigeria where half of the girls don't even go to school. Girls from Armenia where their brothers go off to fight in wars. And girls from South America who don't have access to full education and there isn't enough money being invested in them. It was a time that I'll never forget, seeing how much I'd taken my life for granted. They told me that sometimes our toughest times inspire the greatest successes. When I was 13, I dreamt up the idea of starting a free code club for young people like me. And despite wanting to do this all on my own like I often do, I was able to secure the support of Barclays Bank to create the best code club I have ever seen in my own humble opinion. We're talking bean bags, we're talking free Wi-Fi, but most importantly, free food. So, Two of life's greatest necessities solved in a tech club. But more than that, it was without the help, with the help of others that I managed to achieve this success. And the truth is, you don't need to be Neil Armstrong to go to the moon. You don't need to be Christopher Columbus to sail the seas, and you definitely don't need to be Theresa May to walk on stage to the song of Dancing Queen. These people have done extraordinary activities achieved extraordinary activities and accomplished great things, including dancing on stage to Theresa May. I'd say that the whole Dancer Queen effect was really a show that when you put your mind to something and believe in something, you can achieve it. So gather your crowd and be fearless in pursuit of what sets your soul on fire. Use your voice and help others find their voice. 
I've been more than fortunate to have been given this platform to share my voice today, and in the past, starting with speaking in this very building five years ago. I've had the honor of speaking on stages since then to thousands of inspirational people and in the likes of Facebook, alongside being fortunate enough to win some awards along the way. But most importantly, remember that perseverance is key. When I was 14 years old, I attended my first TED Talk, hosted at the O2 in London. Almost amidst all the incredible talks, I decided that next year I was going to be on that stage. So I auditioned. Didn't quite get through. Went next year to the TED Talk. Decided this is my year and I auditioned again. And they still didn't like me. So I tried again year after year. And each time I failed, but I realized that I'd been focusing on one goal for so long that I'd forgotten the greater thing. And so audition here and here I am today, so something clearly went right. It wasn't until I realized that my determination to stand on that one particular stage was affecting all the change that I could have elsewhere. So I want you to remember that it doesn't matter who you are, where you come from, or what background you come from. What matters are ambition to fight for what we believe in. We are almost 8 billion individual people, but we are all living under one planet. So next time you find yourself spending your spare time complaining about the news filled with catastrophes, why not follow the internal words of Steve Jobs and think different? So put on your grumpy face, live boldly, and inspire change. Because people in every corner of the world fighting for their causes are changing the world. Join them. Thank you.